Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In this video, we're going to simulate narrow depth of field with tools of Affinity Photo to make a subject stand out even more naturally. And because we're using Affinity Photo 2.0, we're going to use compound masks for even better control. So I know a lot of you are interested in compound masks, so I'm happy to do another video on this topic. So before we begin, let's review what is depth of field. So depth of field is the distance between the closest and farthest objects in a photo that appears acceptably sharp. The camera can only focus sharply at one point, and the transition from sharp to unsharp is gradual. So these are some of the characteristics of depth of field. So here's a good illustration of depth of field. You see the dog's face is acceptably sharp, and that includes the foreground as well. But if we observe the image from foreground to background, you can see that the image gets progressively more out of focus. And that adds the charm to this photo. And so what we're going to do here is simulate this effect. Now to introduce the blur, we're going to be using a particular filter called lens blur. The lens blur mimics the blur applied to a photo when a wide aperture is used to achieve a narrow depth of field. So among the blur filters available with Affinity Photo, this is the one to use when you are simulating bokeh. The lens blur improves the composition of a photo by applying a shallow depth of field to blur an unwanted background. Unlike the Gaussian blur filter, which we discussed in another video, the lens blur filter recreates the bokeh effects generated with a real camera lens. So as you know, in our last video, we used the Gaussian blur, but to reduce noise in an image. So you're supposed to use this particular filter if what you want is a bokeh blur. So the good news here, this can be applied as a non-destructive filter, unlike our previous video on haze removal. With the lens blur, you can apply a mask and have total control on how you want to blur the image non-destructively. So the settings of the lens blur are pretty simple. It has radius, which controls the number of pixels affected. And it has a bunch of options to improve the quality of the blur. Like if you're aware of bokeh, it simulates things like the number of blades, blade curvature, bloom threshold, and bloom factor. Now, if you don't know what this is, it's not important now. All we're going to be using is the radius setting to increase or decrease the blur. All right, so we're going to be working with this image here. What we hope to introduce here is a sharp foreground with a progressively more out of focus background. So we're going to be having two masks here. This is why we're going to be using a compound mask. We will use one mask for the dog and another mask for the background. So let's get right into that. So the first thing we're going to do is add the lens blur. We can do that via the live filters here. And then let's just choose lens blur. There you go. So obviously, if you make the radius very large, you're going to introduce an extremely out of focus image. And it looks pretty nice. Next, let's just create a mask for the dog. Since the dog has fur, we're going to be using the refine mask tool to properly select the fur. If you don't know how to do this, you can watch my other video on selecting fur with Affinity Photo. But I'm going to run through this pretty fast. So as I've mentioned in that video, the first thing you want to do is to create a rough selection. Okay, so let's just do that first. Okay, I'm just going to remove the blur first so it's easier to make the selection. And so once again, I'm just going to be using the polygonal selection tool. The polygonal tool is under this freehand selection tool. Okay, I'm just going to choose polygonal selection. So you can make a rough selection. You can over select if you wish. So if you don't know what a polygonal selection tool is, you can watch my video on the different selection tools in Affinity Photo. That's a great way to actually learn all the various selection tools. Okay, so there, I have my selection now. It's not very easy to see, but uh, you can see the marching ants present in the selection, right? So the next step here is just to click Refine. And once again, you have the red overlay here. So you can see there's a lot of errors. So again, I, I recommend you just use the matte tool to let Affinity decide which one is the foreground and background. All right, so let's try that first. 
So I'm just going to make my brush a little bit bigger. And then I'm just going to just dab over these areas. All right, that worked surprisingly well. This looks good. Now, as I have mentioned in my previous video, to allow for decontaminate colors, which will remove remnants of the background in the selection, the recommendation is to, to choose as output new layer with mask. So that is the recommendation. So I'm just going to do that and let's see how it looks like. And let's just click apply. All right, so we can see now the mask. Let's just do that here. Let's just option click here. All right, and so we can see the mask looks pretty good. Now, if you want to make some adjustments to this selection, you may do that. This is one good way to, to see any errors. see some errors here, so what I'm going to do is just use a brush and then just choose black here and just fix some of these, these errors here. All right, that looks pretty good. So we have our mask now. The next thing we want to do here is just to create a compound mask because we're going to be combining the mask for the background with the mask of the dog, okay? So we're going to be using a compound mask for that. So in this lens blur, what I'm going to do here is just add the compound mask by clicking on mask layer and then choosing compound mask, right? I'm going to add the compound mask inside the lens blur, like so. And then I'm going to add this particular mask into the compound mask. Make sure that it's, it's inside. Okay, so we have our first mask uh, inside here. Obviously, when I do the lens blur, if I double click on this lens blur layer, if I double click, I can actually adjust the radius here. And you can see the mistake now. The object being blurred is the dog. So we want to invert this mask, right? So if you review the mask, again, option click, you can see that it should be inverse. So we can just do a command I here to get the, the inverse of this mask, right? So that looks a lot better. So that looks fine in itself, but what we want is to have some gradual blurring from the foreground to the background. So what we need to do is to actually add a gradient, all right? So how do we add the gradient? We simply go into the compound mask, click on mask layer, and I'm just gonna choose an empty mask here. Okay, so now we have the mask. What we want is a gradient from black to white because we want the background to be white while the foreground to be sharp. All right, so let's just add the gradient here. So let's just choose the gradient tool. Let's just option click on this mask. So you have to adjust this, this particular tool here so that the foreground here is black while the background is white. Okay, so let's look at the compound mask now. So as you can see, the compound mask is incorrect. What we want is the dog to be in black and the background to go from black to white as you move from the foreground to the background. So this is incorrect. And the reason it's incorrect is by default, if you click on this blue icon here, you see that by default, the operator is set to add. So it's adding the two tones together. That's not what we want. So what is the correct operator for this case? Okay, what is the correct operator? Now, of course, there are only four, and so you can choose each one. You can just choose each one to test. But the correct one is the intersect. Okay, so intersect will retain the darker tones of the mask when you combine it. So intersect, it works like a multiply. When you multiply something by a zero, the result is zero. Let's choose intersect now. And now we have the mask that we want. And let's look at the final result here. And now you can see the dog is sharp while the background is out of focus, right? So you can actually adjust the, the blur here, of course. If it looks unnatural, you can, you can adjust this, of course. And of course, you can adjust the gradient in any way that you want. You want the depth of field to be a little bit shallower, then you could introduce more white into the top part here. You can have a larger area of white. Now, another thing that you could do, sometimes the foreground is blurred as well as the background, right? So it's only the, the dog 
itself, which is in focus. The foreground and the background is out of focus. How do you do that? You do that via simply adjusting the, the gradient, right? So what you can do here is, let's just create a selection here. We can just use the rectangular marquee tool. Let me just option click this. Okay, it's not perfect, but you get the idea. So what you're doing here is just keeping the middle portion sharp, right? So what you have here is if you make the lens blur here really large, you can see that the background and the foreground are out of focus while just the dog is in focus. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe you don't. It's just an option. You can make the adjustments here with this region here. All right, so I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have some other way of introducing this type of narrow depth of field. Till the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.